Hi everybody and welcome to uh, a beautiful Saturday morning here in Thailand in Paimung in Panga, Thailand. Now where is that? Uh, a lot of people are a bit confused. It, it, it's sort of been randomly called Turtle Beach in the past and also was renamed Turtle Beach by Mr. Steve Ross who I'll be doing a program with tomorrow called Grumpy Old Men. Not that we're that grumpy that often. Anyway, can you hear me? Because uh, that's important. Um, now, just a few things to say about uh, Turtle Beach. Uh, the real name is Tai Mung Beach, and it's part of a long stretch of beach that pretty much stretches from Kaolak down to uh, well, Phuket. In fact, uh, if that wasn't that little 200, 300 metre patch of water between Phuket and the mainland, the beach would stretch all the way down through Mai Kau. So it's just north of Phuket. Uh, from Phuket International Airport takes about 35 minutes to drive. And it's the pleasure, the best pleasure in the world. Yeah, almost. You can drive out of Phuket International Airport and turn left. Oh, it's heaven. Uh, because uh, we've got four lanes of uh, pretty much uh, quiet, uh, easy, nice winding road all the way uh, across the bridge and up to uh, to Panga to Tai Mung, which is a little town on the way to Khao Lak and you drive through the town most people turn right and head to Khao Lak but you can keep on going ahead and you'll make your way to the beach but even I after living in Phuket for 12 years had never seen this beach and <coughs> that'd be a dog uh, I'll talk about dogs and cats in a moment uh, but, uh, so, uh, where was I? Yes, uh, it, it's a year, pretty much this week, where I sort of, uh, well, had been to Turtle Beach a couple of times, and I started thinking about moving here. Now, from that time to now, a lot has happened, and I thought I'd share a bit uh, with you about that today, and uh, how it's profoundly changed my life. Well, I'm glad to say for the better. A lot of talking going on. Little Husky was a pup about this big, and now it's about this big with paws like this. Uh, a very cute dog. Doesn't like the soy dogs, though. So uh, it, it's been a really interesting year. Now, w what I've done uh, over that year is I sort of discovered this business I didn't even know existed. And uh, th that is, th well, it, it didn't exist here. If you wanted to stay in Tai Mung, there was a boutique hotel up the road, some little bungalows uh, sort of in the second road behind the beach, nothing along the beach at all. Uh, so I found these old fishermen's cottages and I thought, I think I could renovate those. So I did a bit of homework You've got to do homework before you do anything in Thailand. Don't do it on a hunch. Don't do it because you think it'll be a good idea. Do it because uh, it's a sound financial decision. Of course, everything's got risks, but if you do your homework, you calculate those risks, well, you know, go ahead or, or don't. So in between March last year and March this year, I've uh, decided to move to Thai Mung. I've uh, started renovations on two uh, old fishermen's cottages. Then I've found a third property where I actually live and it's got a, uh, a little beach house behind it. So th that's been an enormous uh, change over that, that 12 months. Now just in the last three months there's also been other big changes and I'll go to that in a moment. Norel, thank you very much. Norel says, hi Tim, have a hot matcha latte or two. Very nice at that cafe. Yes, Norel came and uh, she stayed at uh, Bonneville and I'll actually show you the beach houses in, uh, well, during the program when we get around to it. But uh, thanks Norel and I know you enjoyed your, uh, your time here and uh, the heat, it's kept on being hot up here. Although the last couple of days we've started seeing a, lit, a few spits of rain and uh, we do have the rainy season coming sometime over the next month. Thanks, Norel. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, so uh, let's just have a quick look at where I am this morning. And, oh, hang on, I've got to press buttons here. This will take a little bit of 
a moment to sort out. No, I've got to press this. Here we go. This is the beach this morning, uh, the Taimung Beach. And uh, as you can see, the waves, when they come in, they sort of crash right on the beach. And that's about the only problem with the beach. It just means you've got to time your entry into the water uh, a little bit more carefully than otherwise. But pretty much this stretch of beach faces out towards the Andaman Sea, uh, the Indian Ocean, and then over to, uh, to India. So uh, yeah, that's the beach. Now, if I'm actually walk from the beach, uh, this is where I am, uh, the road that stretches along the Taimung Beach Road. And then you've got uh, Bin La, which is a lovely little restaurant, sort of outdoor. And then here I am, this is Chip Fe Le Le, where I am this morning. And then uh, looking back down the beach, as you can see, it's peak hour, very, very busy indeed. A couple of soy dogs, not much more to, uh, to talk about there. But from that situation, uh, yeah, it comes a, a very pleasant lifestyle. You've got the beach, uh, you've got a very quiet location. Uh, but as we keep on saying, it's not for everybody. And uh, before people come and they go, oh, this is paradise and there's nobody here. Well, yeah, that's pretty much the truth. And there's no bars, there's uh, very little social life, unless you get to know some people, which I'm glad to say that I have. Uh, but you don't come here unless you've got something to do. It's great for a week uh, or maybe less if you want a bit of a break. But to live here, a whole different ball game. And I think a few people have found that uh, actually living here is not particularly easy unless you've got something to do. But I did want to sort of share with you <clears throat> the, the one particular project. So I've had one, two, three, I've now got three beach houses and my own house. So four properties in total. Now, if I go back uh, a few months, uh, this was the property that I started leasing in December last year. Now, it actually had a roof on it when we were there, but the roof was completely dilapidated. So we took the roof off, and that's uh, remnants of the roof you can see there. All that was left was a few rear walls, uh, a storeroom, uh, there's some bathrooms out on the right side there and then you got those uh, concrete poles so from that we then had to try and uh, make a house now behind that particular house is uh, our third uh, little beach bungalow and i'll show you that in a moment but uh yeah where are we here we are so this is what we've ended up with we've now got a nice little home uh, a, a beach house if you like and uh, yeah, as I call it, home sweet home. You can see there's two leftover poles out the front. And uh, we've just planted two, uh, what are they called? Bougainvilleas, which grow like weeds here and quite spectacular in some cases too. And they'll grow up those poles and then we're gonna put some poles back to the, the main house and uh, hopefully the uh, Bougainvilleas will grow uh, across those and uh, fill up that space. And uh, yeah, from the front, uh, it sort of looks a bit like a, a little beach house from the front, but it's uh, about how many, about 100 square meters? Yeah, about 100 square meters. Is it 100 square meters? Yeah, about 100 square meters inside. So it's quite, uh, quite large. And we'll show you some photos inside at some stage. Uh, but we've still got a little bit of work to do in there, but I was amazed this morning, I suppose the reason for doing the video is that, uh, I don't know if you've talked about this before, oh, I'll get to these comments in a moment. Did Turtle Beach get flattened by the tsunami? No, Robbie, and I'll tell you why in a sec. So I was shocked this morning, just I don't know, randomly cleaning out my phone and I found this photo of the house and I noticed it was timestamped December. And here we are at the end of March and we've gone from that completely derelict it used to be an old restaurant, but it had been derelict for 15 years. There were piles of dead rats and shit and detritus that had sort of built up. It was just a total wreck. I think a lot of people thought I was completely mad. I thought I was completely mad. But uh, here we are, three months later, and we've actually been living in there for a month. Uh, so yeah, two months after that first photo, we were living in the house and uh, it was at lock-up stage and now we're starting to well get to that point where we can say it's sort of finished uh, you know the curtains are up and the floors painted and the walls are painted and it's been fitted out we've got the kitchen uh, great ikea kitchen by the way uh, very happy with that 
So, but interesting to see the progress of, uh, of that property. But uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Steve Ross just uh, driving past on his bike. And uh, we'll be with Steve tomorrow with Grumpy Old Men. That's Steve Ross with an E. So, uh, yeah, from a year ago, deciding to uh, perhaps move here, to then uh, fitting out three beach houses and my own house. So doing four, still losing my fingers here, four makeovers. And these were pretty major makeovers. It just wasn't a coat of paint and a new set of curtains. These were not necessarily structural, but we had to replace a lot of roofs, had to fix a lot of leaks, had to install a lot of air conditioners, plus the painting and the tiling and uh, all the decorations, buying all the furniture. Now, a lot of people saying, well, how much have you thrown at this? So to end up with three short-term rental properties and a house to live in, uh, without the exact numbers, but I, so far, I, I haven't topped getting close but I've spent between 900,000 and a million baht to do those four innovations the three short-term rentals and uh, and the house so it's not a king's ransom what's that about 30,000 US dollars uh, maybe about 35 40,000 Australian dollars so uh, if I think about what I've got and uh, how that's actually working now as a business I'm in a pretty good place uh, the short-term rentals, the, the first two, have pretty much already paid for the money that I spent on those. In other words, the money that I've been getting in from the short-term rentals has almost already paid for the other uh, renovations I did on them. The, uh, the third one, it's going to be a bit harder to calculate, um, uh, but it'll probably pay for itself by the end of the year. And then, of course, I've also got that property that I'm living in. Uh, I've got 10-year leases on all of them, and I'm just about to sign another one. <laughs> Doing this. Um, so we're going to have, at some stage, four short-term rental properties here on the Paimung Beach. So hopefully that is a bit of a, uh, an update on where I am. Now, uh, people want to know how my hand is. This is what one hand looks like. This is what the other hand looks like. Um, very, very swollen. And uh, I got bitten by my cat Dusty the other day. I think it was Dusty. Uh, this, and people have been saying, oh, you shouldn't intervene in cat fights and you should get uh, some uh, water spray or throw a wet towel over them. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what actually happened? It was about 1 a.m. in the morning. Suddenly, <coughs> so I realized there's cats inside my house. Well, my usual cats, they'd never fight together. So uh, I tear out of the bedroom and uh, th 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 try to sort of, in the dark, figure out what the hell is going on. And I sight a white cat. Now, we don't have a white cat. But I realized Dusty, uh, Dusty's about 13, had decided didn't like the white cat coming into the house. And there's still plenty of ways that uh, cats can get into the house. Uh, so, yeah, I realized that Dusty was trying to uh, kill this white cat. And so uh, I reached down to grab the white cat. And, of course, Dusty went and got one, two, three, four all four of those fangs right in my hand. It didn't particularly hurt at the time. Well, at the same time, I was pretty shocked by the whole situation. Uh, but I did uh, grab the white cat and uh, put it outside, never to be seen again, I would have thought. Uh, Dusty was going to kill the damn thing. But, uh, yeah, it sort of swelled up. I mean, I washed it, did all the things. I realised I'd been bitten by a dog about six months ago my luck and uh, never been bitten by a dog or a cat in my life and I'd had four rabies shots and um, three tetanus shots for that so anyway I went to the doctor and he's given me anti-inflammatories and uh, antibiotics and stuff I've been taking them and it hasn't got any worse in fact it's probably better today than it was last night but last night I did go down to the hospital I'm realizing I haven't got to any of the topics I was going to talk about today I went to the hospital because it was quite painful and it was very puffy and I thought, I really don't want to lose my right hand. Uh, so I went to the Tai Mung Public Hospital. Yes, we've got a little public hospital. Uh, it, it's hardly able to do heart surgery, I would have thought, 
But I mean, yeah, it's the local Tai Mung public hospital. And it's got an emergency section, so I went there, handed my passport, and um, very funny when they put your name up onto their, uh, their messaging system because uh, obviously it's designed for the Thai language and trying to read out, uh, <laughs> all I could hear is Australia, so I figured it was me. Uh, I went in there and uh, they said, oh, these are the tablets the doctor gave me. I was thinking they were going to sort of maybe give me something a bit stronger, but they said, no, nope, that's fine, just stick with that. And they said, oh, we're going to give you a rabies vaccine. I said, well, no, 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 I've actually had. And then it, we went through a half an hour conversation of when I had the rabies vaccines and how many I've had. And we were using Google Translate and she was on the computer checking about rabies vaccines. And there was one nurse who was saying, this is Thailand. You do what we say. I went, OK, look, I'm not going to get into an argument with you. But um, yeah, I mean, Thai doctors generally don't like to be confronted with uh, uh, questions or you perhaps challenging them, even if you're polite. And I was very polite at all times. But yeah, they don't like to be... She was determined that she was going to stick an injection in my arm no matter what. And she was there with the needle and she was ready to go. I said, whoa, 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 can we just work out the timing here whether I actually need to waste an, a rabies vaccine Anyway, in the end, I thought, I'll just get this damn booster. It won't hurt me. So I had the extra rabies vaccine. So uh, here we are. And uh, yeah, as people say, the cat bites can be pretty bad. And it was very sore. So clearly it got infected. Uh, and it, it's obviously still infected. But uh, it is feeling a whole lot better today. But I'm not using my white pen for the iPad because... I pretty much can't hold the pen in my hand at the moment. So there you go. Uh, my hand's going to be okay. As I said, uh, it's less red this morning. The swelling's gone down a bit. Uh, so I think by maybe tomorrow, the uh, swelling will be just about gone. Antibiotics would have done their work. Thank heavens for modern medicine. Otherwise, maybe uh, if this was a couple of hundred years ago, um, I, I would have had a very serious infection and probably lost minimum my hand. Somebody's got somewhere to go. What else have we got to talk about here? There's plenty to talk about actually. Let's go through some of your comments and I'm sorry I've been um, ignoring you. Uh, any of your properties long term, says Neil. Yeah, they're all long term. I've got uh, 10 year leases with an option for another 10 years. Now, there is certain risks beyond just uh, renting Thai property. Not that there are that many risks, really. But um, there was always the possibility, uh, no matter what you do in Thailand, that the paperwork can be a bit iffy. Uh, the paperwork has to be in the Thai language, otherwise it's not legal. So there's issues of translation. Uh, and also, the, the land along here without sort of getting into the Thai complications and nuances, it, it's, I suppose you'd call it crown land. So the people have ownership by sort of long-term uh, living or residing in the, those areas and those properties. And some areas have been divvied up as uh, sort of, you know, plots of land and buildings have been built. But um, they, they've changed the rules here over the, the years and uh, you, you can't build along the foreshore anymore not the foreshore this is on the, on the other side of the road where i'm sitting now looking out towards the water so i've got about a 50 meter band of, uh, of sand between the road and the actual beach uh, and then you've got all the well, the properties that uh, line the timeline beach and there'd be around about a kilometer I suppose of properties which are old fishermen's cottages uh, some of them are being lived in some of them are completely derelict uh, some of them have vanished some of them have been renovated and uh, some of them are being rented and then you've got some cafes and some restaurants as well but there's really not much else oh there's um, a university a bit further down the road as well uh, but really not not much else but you can't build so if you can uh, rent a property here, that's all you can do. You can only rent it. You, obviously, as a foreigner, you can't buy it. But even if you've got a Thai company, you can't buy property along the foreshore. So all you can do is get a long lease 
hopefully that explains it. Let's go back uh, through here and see what we've got. A lot of comments, and thank you very much for joining in, everybody. Discussion uh, from Robbie. With the two top cops sent to the naughty corner, is there any hope that the endemic corruption in the police force can be eliminated, or is the allure of ill-gotten gains just too big? Robbie, um, yeah, look, I mean, there is corruption uh, in the Thai police force. Pretty much there's corruption in most Asian police forces. Less so in places like Japan and, say, um, uh, Singapore. But most other countries have got sort of endemic uh, corruption. Not to say that corruption doesn't exist in police forces in other countries around the world as well. It's just not spoken about. It all happens behind closed doors and the bribes are not asked for quite as openly as they are here in Thailand. Uh, but yeah, look, I think because police are paid so little that there's always going to be a certain amount of uh, corruption in the Thai police force until they restructure it. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but young cops are always going to have to pay uh, superior cops or cops higher up the list uh, amounts of money to get rather than earn a, uh, or buy, I suppose, a, uh, a promotion to make their way up the tree because the further you are up the tree the uh, the bigger the the take so look it's just the way it works here and I know a lot of people sort of uh, complain about the the cops and the corruption here but it it is endemic and it's been happening uh, for probably centuries and it's not going to change tomorrow and it's not going to change because you want it to change the change will have to come from the governments and I, I think it is less corrupt than it used to be but certainly with this current case of both the, uh, the Chief of Police and the very high profile Deputy Chief Surachat Hakpan uh, being under some sort of cloud and under investigation, it doesn't look good. But uh, generally, I mean, look, if you're here as a tourist and you're on a motorbike and you're riding down the road and you don't have your helmet on, or if you don't have a, a, a proper Thai uh, license or what will qualify, which would be an overseas motorbike license, an overseas driving license for a car won't suffice. So, I mean, they're going to get you on a technicality and they're going to slug you for 500 baht. And they're usually going to do this just before lunch on any given day. And yeah, they will stop you and all the Thai drivers will go past without their helmets and with 13 people on the bike. And you wonder, oh my God, it's so corrupt. But at the end of the day, it's just part of life here. And it's probably not going to change. The best thing I can suggest is, if you are a tourist, is have the correct license, make sure you've got your helmet on and they don't have much to go on. Uh, and they're not going to be nasty about it. And they're not going to be pulling out a, I was going to say, they're not going to be pulling out a gun. Um, we won't talk about that particular case because that will be going through the courts at some stage. So that's, I suppose, what I've got to say about that, Robbie. Let's move on. Hi, Tim. Joining the live program, uh, first time from Chicago, Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Nice to have you with us. I know we've got another uh, Ch Chicagoan. What do you call a person from Chicago? Uh, oh, we've got uh, Scott D from Nord Park neighbourhood in um, Chicago. Scott had something to say as well. Where is it, Scott? Uh, okay, Jury, uh, Scott had a, a story. Durian hard candy leads to gas company conducting a possible gas leak. My wife, says Scott, was gifted a $17 US bag of durian hard candy. Uh, ten colleagues tried the candy. Only two liked it. I'm surprised you've got two. But several nearly threw, um, the, threw up. The rancid smell led to the gas company being called for a possible gas leak. I'm hardly surprised. Look, some people love durian, particularly Thai people. I hate it. I think it's appalling. The best durian is the durian that's the farthest away from me. Good morning from Smoky Chiang Mai, says Globe Tripper. Uh, we've done Robbie's discussion there. Hi from Nantabri, says Scarface. And uh, yeah, a lot of people talking to each other in the chat room. I'm sorry, I'm just a bit late to get to all the chats. Don Whittle, Henning, Juhus. 
sorry, I got your name wrong, Luke Manton. Morning from Sydney. Uh, Bill G has a question. Unlike America, when one election cycle ends and another begins the next day, when is the election cycle for the new Senate in May? Yes, the hand-picked, junta-appointed Senate of all the uh, ex-army people and flunkies, they uh, get kicked out of the job in May. Excuse me, scratching my nose. Uh, yeah, so they, and there will be a free and fair election uh, for a new Senate. And that is going to be a bit of a milestone for, uh, for democracy here in Thailand because we're going to have an elected lower house and an elected upper house. Uh, and this is interesting because the way that they're doing it is they're choosing 20 occupations and they're going to uh, allow people to nominate if they're one of those occupations and uh, stand in all 77 provinces of Thailand, well, 76 provinces plus Bangkok. So it is going to be a Senate that is going to truly represent the entire country. Uh, and those elections, all ties will be able to vote and uh, it, I'm pretty sure, is going to have a, a strong show from people who would represent the, um, the, the, the feelings uh, or the vibe of the Move Forward Party. Now, that's complicated at the moment because the Move Forward Party are facing some sort of uh, extinction by the Constitutional Court. Won't get into that at the moment. So these people might be standing as independents or under some new party banner, because no sooner will the Move Forward Party be disbanded when uh, another progressive party will be uh, formed here in Thailand. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic, but I'm sure that Senate is going to be much less conservative than it is now. I mean, at the moment, you would describe it as an extremely army-centred, conservative, uh, old Thailand uh, sort of Senate. And uh, that's why the Move Forward Party weren't able to form a government, because uh, the way that the uh, government is chosen at the moment is both the lower house and the upper house have a say in um, the formation of the government. Now, with the new Senate, the Move Forward, uh, a more progressive Senate, we would have seen the Move Forward Party romp into government. So uh, the Senate's going to be one thing, and then there's going to be another election in two or three years here in Thailand, and any progressive party is going to romp into power. Simple as that. Uh, the numbers are the numbers. The statistics are very simple. So uh, did I answer the question? I can't remember what the question was. But yeah, uh, we will have uh, elections. There will be um, a, a campaign of maybe a month. And uh, it'll all be over and done with. People will vote and uh, that night we'll know who the new senators are and uh, they'll take their place. I think there's uh, 250 senators uh, in um, Thailand. There's 500 uh, seats in the lower house. Uh, Oz Thai Traveller, best thing you did was getting out of Phuket. Have two friends that have been retired there for the last 15 years. They're dying to move. One came from Australia last week to sell his house in Talang. Well, the good news is because of the, uh, the Phuket prices have risen so much, they're likely to, to get a good price for their house in Talang. Is it acceptable to put your elbows on the table, says Luke? I don't care. Um, I do sometimes. Yeah, don't put your elbows on the table. Only reason I tell Mr. Steve Ross not to put his elbows on the table is because we usually have a, a rickety table like this and the ta all the tables seem to wobble. Uh, okay, what else have we got here? Uh, I think we've got another super chat, so I'll just address that. And we've got it from John S. in Melbourne, who has been extremely generous. John, thank you very, very much. And he says, Happy Easter, Tim, and Happy Easter to everybody who uh, celebrates or commemorates Easter. Not sure whether you celebrate Easter. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I did get some hot cross buns sent up and I enjoyed those the last two or three days. But uh, it was only last week somebody reminded me that it is Easter this weekend. So I'm sorry, I completely forgot. But uh, happy Easter to those people that commemorate it and to uh, the Christians out there who uh, treat it as a holy day. Um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Easter Sunday. That's when the Easter eggs come out. 
Hi Steve, Easter eggs, remember? Uh, okay, what else have we got? Uh, more questions and comments. Uh, Ken RQ, good morning Tim. And chat people from a lovely Hua Hin. Uh, rude boy forever, I have no idea what you're talking about. Your hand looks painful, says DT. Yeah, it is quite painful. Um, sort of in between the two lots of bites, the two lots of fangs. But as I said, uh, it is less red this morning. I'll be okay. Uh, okay, what else have we got here? I uh, completed a variety of spring cleaning projects. This is Scott D, still ongoing and will lead into the summer. Uh, Tim, the beach is gorgeous, says Gail. Yes, it is. And I love living here every single day. And uh, yeah, I need to thank uh, Steve because he was the one that sort of dragged me up here because he was too lazy to go to Phuket to record our first grumpy old men. But I'm so grateful that I was able to uh, be dragged up here and discover this beach and uh, be able to establish my business. I'm gonna show you my rentals in a moment, just in case you're interested. By the way, there's a link down in the description of the video, and it's got links to uh, all the beach houses if you wanna have a deeper dive into the costs and the um, availability and that stuff. Good morning, Tim from Chile, Canada, Canada, says Andreas Gaming in Thailand. Keep up the great work. Hope to come and stay someday soon. I hope you can too. Uh, did Turtle Beach get flattened by the tsunami? This is from Robbie. Good question. Well, uh, it's, it, it was hit, obviously, by the same waves that uh, hit everywhere else along this uh, Andaman coast. But unlike parts of Phuket to the south and unlike Kaolak to the north, the geography of the beach here is quite different. In other words, when you walk into the water anywhere along this stretch of, you know, 20 kilometer stretch of beach, you walk into the water and you go in 10 steps and you're up to here. So it's very, very steep. Now, different from say, Kamala Beach, Patong Beach, uh, Naihan Beach, Kaolak, where it's got a, a very shallow approach to, uh, to the shore. And uh, so what happens is the wave... Thank you. What are you talking about? So the wave, as it comes in, there's nothing really stopping it. But yes, the shoreline's coming up, but the wave rises with it in Kaolak. The wave went one kilometre inshore. Now, in uh, places like Patong, it certainly came across the beach and into the first couple of streets. Uh, in places like uh, Kamala, it certainly came right into the shore because those beaches have got quite shallow approaches to them as well. So here, mostly, it didn't get beyond the actual beach. In some parts, I'm told, it did sort of come onto the, uh, the, gr the grass, but it didn't come onto the road or uh, make any destruction of the properties along the, um, the main road here. So it's sort of tsunami proof. Uh, although if we got a big wave, of course, that would change. But if the wave was maybe a, a few metres higher, it would do a lot more damage to places like Kaolak and Phuket than it would do here. So, um, no, it didn't get flattened. Uh, but, of course, it was, um, uh, it was one of the locations where people came, like the hospital here became very, very busy, as did Panga Hospital. Um, to, uh, to take a lot of the people uh, from who were injured in Kaolak, which is about uh, 25 minutes up the road. Uh, Narelle C, Don Whittle, he didn't buy, he is renting and has a business visa. I'm sorry, Narelle, I don't know what you're talking about there, but I'm sure it's a conversation with somebody there in the comments section. Key J, Tim, how did you go about leasing the properties? Was it through an agent? No. I would never do anything through an agent in Thailand. A good luck if you have, and I hope you've had success. Uh, but the best way to rent properties, I find, is to find out who the owner is and deal with them direct. Now, if you're a bit of a newbie, if you're a bit scared of uh, negotiating with the Thais, then uh, by all means, do it through a, an agent. But <clears throat> the agents are going to be adding their commission, of course. Um, and they may have a range of properties, but 
Yeah, you know, the best properties I've had, and I've rented, I don't know, back in Phuket, maybe six properties over 13 years. Uh, and I've had to move for different reasons, mostly work. Uh, but uh, here, it was really a matter, I didn't, you, there was nobody living in the properties that I've rented, so I had to ask around, had to ask some questions, and uh, you find out it's the cousin of the guy who lives next door, and then he's uh, passed over the ownership to somebody else, and then he has to contact his mother, and she died, and they refer you to their second cousin, and eventually you find out who has some sort of title on the property, and then you go about negotiating. Uh, they usually ask you to put the contract together, so I've just got a pro forma contract that I use, and we make variations about when the payments are made, uh, whether they're monthly or annually, and if there's gonna be any uh, interest rate increases included in the contract, what happens when the contract expires, uh, what you're able to do with the property as far as renovations are concerned, uh, what you um, can't do uh, if you're allowed to sublease. So all these things have to be negotiated. But I've done that all directly with the owners, uh, usually with a, uh, a Thai interpreter who's able to make sure that all the discussions are, are done appropriately. Um, I haven't had lawyers check the other uh, contracts. They're just basic rental contracts. There's not much for the lawyer to check. And then the 10-year leases have to be registered with the land office uh, by law for them to, uh, to become uh, legally binding. So that's the process. I mean, it's not particularly complicated, but I find that with the agents, you end up with lawyers and higher fees and you don't really end up with what you want. And they're not going to be able to find the sort of properties that I have. Now, if you want a fully finished luxury villa in Bang Tao, uh, hundreds of agents got all sorts of properties that you'll pay one, two, three hundred thousand baht a month for. By all means, uh, use an agent because they'll have lots of those properties available. But these ones have been really just uh, almost derelict, pushover, start again properties. But because you can't, you can only renovate, you can't sort of really rebuild. In fact, putting the new roof on the house, that was considered a build and not a renovation. So we had to pay a fine, but the fine wasn't that much and certainly was, uh, was uh, worth it. In fact, by far, if I look at all the costs spent of that 900,000, 1 million baht spent on the renovations of the four properties, the new roof in property number four was uh, the most expensive. It took uh, nearly a third of that budget just to do that roof. So if you take that out of the equation, I haven't really spent that much money on these renovations. I set a target of not spending more than a million. I haven't reached it yet, but uh, let's have a look, if you want, at the four properties that I've ended up with. And why not? Let's have a quick look. Press the right buttons here, Tim. Um, and here is property number one. And we call this one uh, Bonneville. Uh, Bonneville was named after the Bonneville uh, salt flats. Uh, it was inspired by a painting. I actually don't have a picture with the painting in it, but that looks uh, from, you can see the, the, the water over the road there. Uh, and uh, that's the, 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 the timeline beach. And then we've got the sort of the dining area looking down through the office, down to the kitchen at the back, uh, one of the bedrooms there and uh, the, the kitchen renovated, which is an old style Thai kitchen uh, renovated and we've sort of added the washing machine. But yeah, I mean, they, these are old fishermen's cottages which have been converted into uh, the sort of the beach houses. So it's not as if uh, I had, uh, we haven't moved any walls or anything. We put in a few windows at the back, but uh, like the, the bedrooms don't have windows. It's not because I don't want them to have the windows, it's just they open up into the actual house if I did have them. So uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to have maybe a bedroom at the front, double doors opening out onto the, uh, the view beyond, but uh, that wasn't available to me. Now the next property we've got, uh, which is next door, and it's called Coral Cottage, and it's a little bit more beachy themed, and it's got a bit more sort of old furniture in it as well. 
hate that photo. I should have put the um, that down at full recline. It looks a bit uh, uncomfortable there. Anyway, that's Coral Cottage and uh, the, the garden at the back. This has been an interesting project all the way along because when we got there, I don't know, some uh, 10 metres, maybe 12 metres of, uh, of garden by about 30 metres wide. And it was just six foot of weeds. We didn't know if there was a back wall. We didn't know uh, how big the, the backyard was going to be. So we had to remove everything except for a couple of trees. That's a beautiful mango tree in the foreground there. By the way, it's got lots of very nice mangoes on it uh, as we speak. But uh, yeah, we had to start from nothing and completely replant that. Uh, and you sort of get to see the size of the property there, uh, looking through the dining area and through to the office and the kitchen at the back. Uh, one of the bedrooms again the bedrooms are all very simple uh, and all with air conditioning and then that's the front of the coral cottage there um, so yeah that's coral cottage and then the third one is bamboo beach house which is behind the property that i showed you earlier and it's just one bedroom and it's been done in a very beachy sort of theme as well and again we basically worked within the confines we had uh, things like the bathroom uh, We've just sort of done a basic renovation of that, a bit of a makeover. And uh, out the front, we've just given it a paint, added some furniture and some plants. Uh, got a nice big bedroom, much bigger than the bedrooms in the other beach houses, but only one bedroom. And uh, the living room basically, basically just uh, kept it very simple. So there you go. For those people that <laughs> wanted to see them, they're the, the beach houses and the way they've ended up. And if you'd like to have a, look, a further look, there's a lot more photos. Uh, you can check the availability and maybe you want to come and visit us. And uh, we'd be delighted to see you and hopefully we can uh, give you a, a good time while you're here. Uh, okay, so hi Tim, if you've already talked about this before, but what happened to the Phuket Hotel you were renovating? Yeah, I have talked about it before. Uh, who's this? YT1. Yeah, that uh, Mang Marigold Mountain property, uh, that whole project fell in a mess. Again, tricks for young players. The, uh, the lease was signed, finished, completed, but the owner had decided after the lease was signed that they wanted to make some changes to the lease. I said, well, no, we've already signed it. And um, I sort of had to walk away from that. And we agreed. We agreed to part ways. But um, yeah, I thought, well, Okay, I could sort of take this to the, the courts and I might win, I might not, but who wants to, before we even got the hotel opened, be running a business with an owner that basically uh, didn't like you? It wouldn't have been good. So anyway, from that disaster to, to this, and this just happened very randomly, very organically, and uh, it happened quite well very bright isn't it I'm not sure what I can do about that I can't turn down the uh, the picture oh you're just gonna have to put up with me being a bit bright I'm sorry uh, question from Bill G you mentioned that you have a partner and a person needs something to do in Turtle Beach you have plenty to stay busy what does your partner do to stay busy uh, that's something I'm not gonna bother talking about uh, because uh, all I can say is they are busy and uh, yeah, we obviously both keep very busy and that is something that I'd always recommend. But I don't talk about partners because um, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about Thailand, uh, my life in Thailand, but not my private life here in Thailand. Sorry, Bill. Uh, Prospero, Tim, I was watching an interesting tube from a chap in Chiang Mai highlighting the dangers of soy dogs every morning he goes for a walk emphasising the dogs seem to be okay around ties. Uh, no, look, I think dogs gravitate towards some people and they don't gravitate towards others, be they Thai or otherwise. I've never had any problems with the soy dogs around here, except when I was out riding my bike one, one morning and a dog just out of nowhere just came randomly off the side of the road and just gave me a bite on my leg. Uh, shocking me. Uh, something that I really haven't uh, ever had before. But walking around, I, I haven't had any problems with the soy dogs at all. Uh, now I know some people do walk around here with a stick in their hand, 
I'm not sure if that's the best way to... Uh, I mean, I think that's sort of an aggressive stance to the dogs. I'm not sure if that makes them stay away or if it makes them more likely to attack you. But walking around, I've never had any problems with the soy dogs at all. Not only here at this beach, but uh, in Phuket or up in Bangkok. I think, again, uh, some people are just naturally... Uh, the dogs just don't like them for whatever reason. They're more likely to attack them. But no, I haven't had that uh, particular problem. Uh, thank you, Prospero. The Wu-Tang Life. I'd like to thank the person who coughed and sneezed on me at Suwanapum Airport. You gave me pneumonia and I was sick as a dog for three weeks. Sorry about that. I hope you're feeling better. Can you catch pneumonia like that? Okay. I don't know much about pneumonia. SKA, Scarface. Tim, your hand looks painful. Yeah, it's a bit painful, but I'll live. It's okay. Does YouTube pay American dollars or local currency where you are? Evil twin. Uh, well, YouTube is now owned by Google, and Google pay me once a month. They take out tax in America, and then they send me the rest in US dollars. <coughs> deposited in my account. So, uh, yeah, I get paid in US dollars. Are any of your properties long-term? They're all long-term. I thought foreigners weren't allowed to work in Thailand. Uh, well, you can if you have got a, a B visa and a work permit. So, depending on your visa, uh, you, you can work in Thailand. Um, and if you want to work as a solo person, you can form a business and get a work permit as long as you don't work in areas that are uh, only for ties, things like tour guides. Uh, journalism also is thing also reserved for ties, although there are plenty of journalists uh, working around the country who are not necessarily ties. Uh, Cosmo, for that money, you will have a garage box for your car in most Western countries. Love Thailand. I just need to have a good scratch of my nose. Excuse me for a moment. I don't want to do it on camera. Right back. Look up. I also ordered a water while I was there. I think that's feeling better. Um, hope you got your shots, as cat bite can be really bad. Yes, uh, Andreas Gaming in Thailand. So, uh, yeah, I was lucky that <laughs> I was lucky that I was bitten by the dog and that I'd had the. Um, the rabies shots and the uh, the tetanus. Thank you very much. So what happened to the two t Kiwi guys? Can't hear anything anymore. Uh, okay, so they're uh, in detention and they will be awaiting for their time in court in Thailand. Uh, I can't really hold... Um, this properly. <laughs> Your hand not looking good. Keep away from cats for a while. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, the, the, the situation was it was my fault. Uh, don't put your hand in the way of uh, two cats fighting. Well, yeah, but as I said, I was half asleep and it was dark and I was just instantly trying to uh, just protect my cats and it happened. Uh, John, thank you very much. I got that. Money for nothing said... Did you say Thais will receive the 10,000 baht from the government next month? Do you get it if you move away from home province to work in Bangkok? No, uh, on April the 10th, the government is making an announcement about um, who's going to, or how it's going to be paid out. This is a 10,000 baht digital wallet, <clears throat> and it's going to be paid to all Thais, apparently over the six the age of 16. <clears throat> exactly who's going to get it and the conditions, I suppose that's going to be announced uh, on April the 10th. I believe it's going to be paid out in Q4, in the fourth quarter this year. But uh, it's not. they're not going to be paid next month. On April the 10th, they're going to uh, be told exactly how the digital, the 10,000 baht digital wallet is going to be working.
How did that motorcycle accident happen last week where three people got killed? I'm not sure which one. There are motorcycle accidents where people get killed every single day of the week. <clears throat> You're talking about the one in Phuket, two foreigners, I think it was a Russian, a Swede and a Thai, died on uh, their motorbikes and one Thai, a person who was at the back of the motorbike, they survived, if you're talking about that one. Um, I, they hit head on, so they were, I don't know what happened. Happened in the south of uh, Phuket, if that's the one you mentioned. Uh, have your Thai woman drive you around, no problem in four years. Richard Townsend's comment, well said Tim, on the subject of tourists using and having correct license to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, if you want to ride a motorbike here in Thailand, you can go down to any rental place and uh, they will happily give you a motorbike and they'll charge you three or four hundred baht a day for the pleasure of riding it around. <clears throat> now, you might have to um, show your passport. In some cases, they'll say they want to keep your passport. No, 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 no. Do not give your passport to the motorbike rentals. But uh, whatever contract you sign and whatever insurance it talks about, it means nothing. Now, if you don't have a Thai motorbike license or an international motorbike license with an international driver's permit, you are not legally able to drive in Thailand. If you've got a car driving license and an international driver's permit, you can drive a car in Thailand, but you can't legally drive a motorbike. So when the police pull you over, uh, well, they're going to nab you on that and they'll get their 500 baht and uh, share it around the office. It also is a problem if you have an accident because your insurance company will, well, it won't insure you. In fact, it's pretty much unsure whether they'll insure you for driving a motorbike in Thailand anyway. But even if they do, if it's covered in your insurance policy, if you don't have the correct paperwork, Thai driving license or an international, um, uh, did I say, a Thai motorbike license or an international bike license and an international driver's permit, you, you're not going to be covered legally. And uh, of course, the people you rented the motorbike from, they're going to want uh, the cost of a new motorbike put in their bank as well. So, all sorts of problems. The best thing you can do if you don't have the requisite uh, licenses is don't rent a motorbike in Thailand. If you've got a car driving license in your own country, plus an international driver's permit, then rent a car. Air conditioning will be nice this time of the year as well. Uh, question, are there Easter, oh dear, what happened? Something about Easter, sorry I scanned past it. Daryl McGee, thank you very much, Daryl. Appreciate your support. Uh, it's giving me a cat giving a thumbs up. Enough about the cats. A happy Easter, Tim says Tom W. Somebody was asking about Easter and I've scanned past it and I can't find it. What about an elected upper and lower house? This government came the same way as the last one, but without guns and tanks on the streets. This is from Pass. No, uh, that's not actually correct. The last election we had, the, uh, oh, the Move Forward Party won the highest number of seats. But having the highest number of seats doesn't mean that you automatically form government, unless you've got 50% of the seats plus one. What happened is other parties got together and they t collectively were able to put together a coalition which had more MPs than the Move Forward Party. And they're allowed to do that, and it happened in uh, other Westminster types of government as well. So winning the highest number of votes or the highest number of MP seats, Member of Parliament seats, doesn't necessarily mean that you win government. So it's not as if anything illegal happened. Uh, now, then when you throw the Senate in, of course, uh, you get the overwhelming majority supporting the, uh, the government that we have now. But uh, it's all covered under the 2017 Constitution uh, to the letter. So just because the Move Forward Party got immense support, overwhelming support, surprised everybody, I think it ended up around about 38% of the primary vote. But 
that still leaves a, a long way to get to 50% of the uh, member, 50% of the seats plus one. They weren't able to pull that together. Don't worry, they'll have their moment uh, sometime in the future. Maybe not as the Move Forward Party, but as uh, some other uh, entity. So yeah, all this thing is that, you know, they were railroaded and, well, yeah, there were clever politicians who had been around the, uh, the block a few more times than them that really outsmarted them and were able to pull together a coalition. But it is a completely legitimate lower house. And when we get rid of this hand-picked uh, Senate of ex-policemen, uh, ex-army people and other flunkies, uh, we will have a fully elected Senate as well. So democracy, Thai style, is alive and well. Heading in the right direction, maybe not as fast as some people would like. But all I can do from here is talk about it, commentate about it. I can't vote, I've got no skin in the game. But I'm only interested in the Thai politics from the point of view as they determine whether I can stay here or not. And the politicians at the flick of a pen can uh, make sure I'm not here, as well as a whole lot of other expats if they so choose. Uh, they have plenty of workers in Thailand, unless you're teaching English, it's not easy. Oh, this is uh, people looking to work here in Thailand. Um, hard job. But due to the smoke, yes, it's hard to get a work visa unless you have a skill Thailand needs. Yeah, I mean, if you get uh, employed by a company in Thailand, you can, they'll have to give you a B visa and a work permit. You have to have both of them if you want to work here. Not difficult, but usually the company is going to have to be big enough to be able to support the uh, employment of foreign workers. Do you get paid in American dollars? Uh, yes, I think I've already answered that. Yes, I do. Um, hopefully the pollution will end soon. Is your hand hot to the touch? Hopefully the antibiotics will calm the infection soon. Uh, it's, it's actually a hot, actually, almost as I'm talking, the swelling is noticeably going down. It's a lot better now than, uh, than it was. Two people sitting next to me wondering what the hell I'm doing. I remember Kamala Beach, says William Bright, uh, restaurants having to sandbag the beachside entrances in the low season due to waves coming up to the entrance and many tourists swimming with the beach closed flags up. Yeah, look, it does get pretty rough along the west coast. The Andaman Sea can kick up quite a swell with the southwest monsoon. Waves up to uh, one and a half, two metres, two and a half, three metres, sometimes high, breaking on the beach. So you don't want to be swimming on those days. And if you uh, ignore those red flags on those days, then um, silly you. Uh, we've got plenty to talk about at the moment. We uh, haven't even got to the topics that I'd uh, isolated. Um, YouTubers get paid in US dollars as it's a US company, says Stephen Richter. You're absolutely right. Uh, Bonneville is a name Pontiac used for one of its cars. So is Catalina, if you're looking for another name. Yeah, I just randomly chose that name Bonneville. Bonneville, uh, the flat set, it was a painting by a person called uh, Jack Vetriano. I loved the painting, so I blew it up and I put it in the living room of Bonneville. And I put uh, some other smaller versions and prints of the Jack Vetriano paintings around the house because uh, I just sort of like the vibe of those paintings. And uh, it sort of lent itself to the feeling that I wanted. Uh, he sort of, oh, well, you sort of got to see his paintings to understand what I mean. Type in Jack Vetriano, two Ts, into your Google machine and you'll see some of his paintings. You'll, I'm sure, recognise some of his paintings, a lot of them with a, a, beach, th a beach theme sort of an English beach theme. I flew from Melbourne, says Free Agent, for the motor show and holiday uh, can take the heat for a month. It's been pretty hot here over the, you know, the past month for sure. Congrats Tim, you're doing a great job with your properties. Thank you very much American Aviator. Um, the Wu-Tang Life, even if you open your own restaurant, you're not allowed to cook in Thailand. You can own the business and have to hire Thais to cook for you. That's absolutely right. Uh, can you get your hand... Uh, I'm not going to read that one out. I knew somebody would say something like that. Gary Cross. Hi, Tim. I'm coming to Thailand in mid-May. Might pop up and say hello. Gary, we'd love to see you. And thank you very much for your greetings from... Didn't say where you're from. 
coming up. Okay, then you probably... I don't know where you're coming up from. Gunnar Horpstead. Hate these advertised that's popping up during the live broadcast. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, th- there are different selections you can make doing a YouTube live broadcast as to how you want the advertisements to come up. I'm not doing this for free. Uh, so, yes, we do have the uh, programmable advertising popping up. Probably no more than two or three times. Uh, but YouTube, I've selected YouTube to decide when it wants to put those breaks in itself. I can nominate to later put them in where I want to put them. But it's just easier to let YouTube and the AI decide where to put those ads. The ads you get are going to be different from the ads everybody else gets. Because it's programmable advertising. It's bespoke to your recent searches on Google and perhaps in context with some of the key words that I put in the description of this video. Sorry if there's been too many of them, as I said, uh, mostly out of my control. Richard Townsend has a comment. Seems it has worked out for the best having the original hotel for, uh, project fall away. You're right. You would have been stuck in Phuket for the next 10 years. Yeah, Richard, as it happens, I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. And uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, you just go with the flow. And I made the decision. I regretted initially having made the decision, but this turned up and um, I've been able to put my makeover needs, desires, maybe a few talents into good use up here on Turtle Beach instead. Any chance to create a classic Turtle Beach poster with Steve uh, is a good merch. Coffee mugs too. This is from Jack Flowers. Um, Well, look, Steve or otherwise, if you put Steve and my subscribers and program views together, collectively, we really don't have enough views to be able to uh, do anything with merch. Uh, Merch is a a funny thing. Um, Even when I was working at the Tiger with a lot more subscribers, like over 100,000 plus the entire uh, website behind us to advertise it to millions of people. Much, 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 much bigger business. When we did merch, we hardly moved anything. I mean, it was a tiny amount, really. Maybe it was about 10,000 baht of merch uh, a month, and then you take away the cost of the actual merch and the, the postage and everything. It was uh, slim pickings. So Steve and I, we wouldn't make any money from that merch at all. Having said that, Steve does have a selection of merch uh, and there's uh, his email, if you want to contact him, about that merch. Uh, on the description for Grumpy Old Men, you can find his, uh, his email. But collectively, we're not going to be doing anything, uh, anything together. Don, I'm not answering that. I've answered it a thousand times, including today. Um, apply some honey on your wounds. Jack, uh, the problem is inside. Doing anything on the top of my skin is going to do sweet fuck all. So uh, I need the antibiotics and if I eat the honey and it's nutritionally good for me, that might help, but rubbing it on the uh, outside is not going to do anything at all. But thanks for the advice. Uh, Don't put the water on the same table as the computer. Well, that's a good point. I should have learned. A long, long way, way, way. Put your hand in a bucket of ice. I've actually had a cold pack on it last night. It did give me quite a bit of relief. Ah, oh dear, it just uh, jumps suddenly sometimes. Hello, Tim from El Paso, Texas. Question on grumpy old men. Y'all were talking about Thai smile. How do you tell if the smile is genuine, striking up a conversation versus smiling, hoping you move on? This is from Mark I Am. Yeah, look, uh, the Thai smile, it might be something Steve and I will talk about in more detail for grumpy old men. But I think people have identified something like 17 different Thai smiles. Uh, and Thais will generally smile at you when they meet you, but uh, it might be before they plunge the dagger in your back or something. Uh, but look, most of the time, you're going to get a genuine smile. And look, 
I suppose after a few years here, you do sort of get to read the smiles a bit better than otherwise. But uh, yeah, uh, the Thai smile is ubiquitous, but not always exactly what you think it means. Wilco, comment, have had pneumonia twice while in Thailand and was hospitalised. Am now reluctant to go back to Chiang Mai with the pollution because of the lung damage from pneumonia. Uh, yeah, look, I think you're absolutely right at the moment. This gee, it is getting very bright. I think we'll have to uh, see if I can turn this down a bit. What can I do here? Can I press that and go... Does it do anything? Uh, zoom, where's the focus? Da, 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 da. Reset, does that do anything? No, I think it's still going to be bright. Yeah, look, I can't figure out how to turn <coughs> the... Uh, turn it down it is getting very bright there uh, yeah look uh, Chiang Mai is a bit of a basket case at the moment I'm very sorry to hear about your two bouts of pneumonia but uh, probably at the moment uh, with the uh, PM 2.5 levels so high it's not a place that you really want to be spending time is Turtle Beach dangerous with sharks when swimming uh, pfft, no I have never heard of a shark attack anywhere along the Andaman coast uh, there aren't the great whites along here. I think there are probably small reef sharks, they call them. They'd give you a nip. But I've never heard, I'm trying to sort of think back over about 25,000 stories that I've read here. Um, I've never heard of a shark attack along the Andaman coast. I think the sharks along here are probably pretty well fed and they're not as big. Uh, the biggest problem here is, uh, is, is jellyfish, the Portuguese man of war, they'll give you a nasty sting, but it's not fatal. We don't have the box jellyfish here on the Andaman coast, you get them on the Gulf of Thailand, but not along the Andaman coast. So uh, yeah, a few Portuguese man of war, I've only had one sting, but sometimes during the, uh, the wet season when you've got the, uh, the monsoon coming in, the Portuguese man of war and all those long tentacles, they get broken up and so you get a little sting here or there rather than a whole tentacle dragging across your body. And so you get a few little sort of minor stings but uh, nothing that would stop you wanting to go in the water. But certainly I, I just can't recall in living memory of anybody talking about a shark attack along the uh, the Andaman coast. So everybody's jumping into their Google to try and prove me wrong. Um, that hand of yours looks a little nasty. Yes, it is. Thank you, Dean. Uh, voting is mandatory. Is voting mandatory in Thailand? I, off the top of my head, I don't know. No, I don't think it's mandatory, but a lot of Thais do vote. They seem to be very engaged. Can I, I'll just ask for you. She says voting is compulsory. So there you go, just like Australia. Voting is compulsory in Australia. And I think it's a good thing when voting is compulsory. Because um, it keeps you much more engaged. At least you have to make a decision. But uh, yeah, Pla saying that yeah, voting is compulsory in Thailand. So there you go. Uh, Nati, if I were a foreigner, I will not do business in Thailand but uh, buy stocks in the Thai stock market. Those who pay dividends of more than 5% will deduct taxes. So there you go, that's uh, from Nati, who is Thai, saying, if you're a foreigner, don't do business in Thailand. Tim, still on the blue Mercedes? Yes. How is it working out for you? Lovely car. Yeah, I love getting it out maybe every, uh, uh, oh, now and then I'll sort of, if I've got a friend arriving, I'll go and pick him up at the airport in it. Um, and yeah, go for a bit of a drive up to Kaolaka or along the coast. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely old car. A uh, few rust marks, which I'm going to attend to, but uh, yeah, it is a lovely old car. 1984 W123 Mercedes-Benz in pale blue. 
Uh, yes, thanks. A few more. We'll do two more questions and then we'll say goodbye. Hi, Tim. Haven't been tuning in recently due to some health issues and life issues. Sorry to hear that, Johnsy, or hopefully it's working out. Uh, come to Thailand in 70 days, but has there been any major changes with the broccoli rules? Oh, we're talking, I think we can talk about cannabis fairly openly now, but um, they are going to, uh, to introduce a cannabis bill. And they've already said that that cannabis bill will outlaw the recreational use of cannabis in Thailand. So I don't think there's any surprises there. Uh, but yeah, recreational use and those, I don't know, some 6,000 shops around the country are going to have to change the way they do their business. The medicinal use of cannabis will continue, but recreational use will be outlawed. When will that happen? I don't think it'll happen until about the middle of the year. Uh, they've just changed uh, the, uh, the Marriage Equality Act that's just gone through the lower house of parliament um, by an enormous, uh, I think 400 to 10 votes. So uh, we've got very, very large support. That'll sail through the Senate and um, that'll become law in about uh, two or three months here in Thailand. The broccoli rules probably, the, I, I'm guessing they're not going to get to that until the middle of the year. Uh, where is the painting of the bluebird hanging? It hangs. It's not a real painting, it's a print. Don't tell Jack. Uh, it's When you walk in the door at Bonneville, it's right there on the wall. Uh, if you want to find it, if you want to look, see what the painting looks like, oh, I suppose I can do it for you. Where are we? Here we are. Go to a browser, type in Jack. Oh, this hurts. Vetriano Bluebird. And we'll find a picture for you. Here we are. Here's the painting. This is what the painting looks like. Is it going to load for me? Come on, load up. Oh dear, why won't it? Oop. Here we go. Da, 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 da. There it is. Just make it a little bit bigger. So this is what the painting looks. Oop. Done the wrong thing there. Here we go. Try, try that. There we go. So that is the uh, the painting, which is called Bluebird. And it's, uh, I think it's circa 1936. N not, it was painted much more recently than that, but it's a representation of uh, Donald Campbell and his breaking the land speed record on the Bonneville Salt Flat sometime in the mid 1930s. Uh, a, a painting I particularly like, and uh, yeah, it sort of inspired the name of the Bonneville Beach House. Uh, hi from Amsterdam, says John's Journeys. One more to go. Daryl McGee. Hi, Tim. Question. Do you think that the Thai government is cracking down on vloggers in Thailand, as I've seen on some recent vlogs? Um, well, uh, I don't know. Oh, look, I really don't know. I, I haven't heard of a purge on YouTubers. The whole issue of YouTubers in Thailand, whether they're actually working or not working, whether they're on a tourist visa and just making tourist videos, uh, whether they're monetized or not, uh, there is no particular YouTubers visa. Uh, so exactly how they're going to cope with the people who are monetized on YouTube, making money without a work permit, it's going to be a very vexed question. So uh, I don't have an answer for that. I haven't heard of any YouTubers, and I sort of speak to, I don't know, four or five of them quite regularly. Haven't heard of anybody being contacted and saying, what's going on with your YouTube channel? So uh, I really don't know. Um, sending money or monthly payments to a Thai bank from abroad is taxed now. <sighs> Not universally. If you've had your tax taken out by the government before it's sent to you, then you've already paid tax on that money. Uh, if you are getting money from overseas, there is changes to the laws. There is nothing definitive I can say about it, except that it's not affecting as many people as previously thought, but everybody's going to have to get individual and professional advice as to any changes to their taxation if they are a permanent resident in Thailand and by permanent resident, I'm referring to 180 days plus one. 
Uh, okay, Fra, I think that's about it. I don't want to miss anybody or any particular comments. I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours, but I've been here for an hour and a quarter, and uh, I'm going to go home and uh, put this in an ice pack and uh, just rest for a while. Then I'm going to record Grumpy Old Men with Steve, uh, which we'll have up online tomorrow. But uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I've shared a bit about the last uh, two or three months here and my settling into this community and enjoying my life here immeasurably and uh, making some good friends as well. Hopefully you have a good Saturday. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.